Hello, my name is Meg O'Hearn, and I chose to do the Ponzo Illusion as my experiment. And the Ponzo Illusion was named after Mario Ponzo, who was an Italian psychologist who discovered this. So the Ponzo Illusion focuses on something called linear perspective. And under linear perspective, there's two different subsections that I'm going to be talking about first. The first one would be how if lines are parallel in three dimensions, then they're going to converge into a single point in the two dimension realm. And that's going to be the part of linear perspective we'll focus on for the Ponzu illusion. And the second part is that lines that are perpendicular in three dimensions are gonna converge at different vanishing points. That one's not going to be as relevant to the Ponzo illusion, but I thought I would bring it up anyways because it is important for linear perspective. Um, so also important in the Ponzo illusion is going to be depth cues. We use depth, depth cues all the time throughout our lives to figure out how close and far things are away from us. Um, our retina pick up on a certain image, and since this image is going to be two-dimensional, we have to use depth cues to give the brain different information to perceive what we're seeing and interpret this information. So basically to start this experiment, you're going to need a piece of paper or a computer or whatever medium you want to put it on. And you need to start with two vertical lines that are going to converge together at one point at the very top, almost like a triangle or a pyramid. And then you'll have two horizontal lines within this pyramid. And the top line is going to act as the independent variable. You're going to adjust this length. In the experiment I did, it was between 150 and 240. Those are the lengths given. And then the experimentee will be given the choice to adjust the bottom line, the length of this line, to match up with the top one. Therefore, the top line is going to be the independent variable, since this is the variable that the experimenter changes lengths between different trials. The dependent variable, on the other hand, is going to be the bottom line, because this is what the experimentee is changing and trying to guess to match the top line. If you look at the results based on the trials alone in chronological order, there doesn't seem to be much rhyme, reason, or order to this. But if you adjust this to the length of the top line, we can now see the difference between the length of the top line as the independent variable versus the estimated length of the bottom line by the experimentee. If you look at the table given, you can see that in most of the trials, the estimated line was overestimated instead of underestimated. For example, in trial number three, which is listed first, you can see that the length of the top line was 150 millimeters, whereas I estimated the length of the bottom line to be 181 millimeters, giving an error percentage of 20.67%. Yes, the findings do support the hypothesis according to the theory. And this is because when you have a set of lines that are vertical and converge at one point in the distance, even if it's on a two-dimensional page like it's given in the Ponzu illusion, it's going to give off the illusion that it's 3D and coming off the page almost. And therefore, when we look at this Ponzu illusion in the experiment, it looks like it's converging at a point in the distance, almost like railroad tracks. So when we try to give the length of the bottom line, we think it's going to be the same length as the top since the top is further back. I believe that these results do provide a good test to the underlying theory. My results in particular from the experiment were in support of the hypothesis according to the theory. I also think that since it's kind of fun and it's an interesting thing to look at, it's a great way to get different illusions out there and show the general public what your eyes can really do and what perception can do. Another idea for a unique experiment would be what I like to call the moon experiment. To do this, you need the night sky, a piece of tape, and a piece of paper. When it's first becoming nighttime and the moon is rising, you go outside and you roll the piece of paper into a tube and put it up to your eye. Then you adjust this tube until it's just the right size of the moon and you put the piece of tape locking it into this position. Later on in the night, when the moon is at its peak, you go back outside and hold up the tube again. You'll notice that the tube is the exact same size as the moon in both positions. Now, this would be a good experiment to show the Ponzu illusion because a lot of people, when looking at the moon, when it's in the horizon off in the distance, think it is so far away in the distance, 
Whereas when it's at its peak, it looks so close and almost that you're closer to it when in reality, it's the same distance all along.